Like, really dumb for real. There's a torture. So is there anything that won't one-shot this thing? Well, shelter. See if I can hit it. So here's the problem with small Pokemon. Small hitboxes. And the grass itself actually has a hitbox, and I'm very lucky to have hit it there. So I think my best bet here would be Icicle Spear because it's going to be not very... Actually, is it still a flying type? Oh. I really don't want to risk it if it is still a flying type. So I'm going to do instead is I'm going to Super Sonic. Because at the very least, I know for a fact Torchic will not be able to kill me. Because the worst thing it can do to me at this point is Ember. Now I'm going to switch to Dragonair. Just so I can Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave is a very important part of my strategies. And the important part of my strategy is Nighttime Dusk Ball. Ugh, it took me a long time to make that many Dusk Balls. Really did. I should probably be saving them for like super high level Pokemon to be completely honest because their catch rate is really good. There we are. So I came here for Torchic. I caught Torchic. I also just realized I passed up a shit ton of Shinx and stuff earlier. Which I probably should not have because I just remembered I don't have any in this world. <laughs> oh well. <clears throat> They're not exactly uncommon so I'm sure I'll find multiple Shinx over the course of the next uh, five or so minutes. Assuming they spawn at night. Great, that's a pretty big assumption. There's a few Vulpix around here. Hey, look at Shinx. I don't want to sign out Shelter against it, though. And I'm pretty sure they haven't updated it to Gen 6 rules as far as Thunder Wave goes, so I can probably still do this. Indeed, I can. Gen 6 rules with Thunder Wave is that Electric types actually cannot be paralyzed using Thunder Wave. They can still be paralyzed using Stun Spore. Not sure how many of you people know that, but if you played through the Gen 6 games and didn't know about Stun Spore on Electric types, then you missed a vital part of the game. However, Stun Spore won't work on Grass types, which is super weird. It seems like completely basically revamped the whole paralysis system so it doesn't work on say, on things that hold the same type as the move that paralyzes. Great, I don't think they did that to Glare. I don't know. I haven't actually had anything use Glare on me in the entirety of Gen 6 because Ekans were so freaking rare in the first place that the odds of one even using Glare on you and that you had a normal type out fighting the Ekans. Like, it's super specific. I've never actually tested that. I could probably test that, but I want to fight the Snorlax. Yes. Experience bound. And the one thing that most people don't realize about Snorlax, its defense is actually shit. Its special defense is actually really good. Hammer arm, kill. Look at that. The only reason it didn't die is because it's a freaking health tank. Basically. Okay, so it turns out Lit Litwick aren't that rare, because, like, the second I saw one, it was, like, the first time I saw one, so I just assumed it was super rare. Turns out it's just kind of rare in forests. Seems to spawn pretty much everywhere, doesn't it? Uh, another small forest here. I've completely lost track of which direction is home, by the way. But just pay no mind to me. Pay no mind to the man who is lost. Psychic for not missing. I am probably going to need to heal my Pokemon very soon. So I should probably start keeping track of where Pokemon centers are. And I guess I'm fighting this Drift Limb. Even though I kind of wanted to not fight it right now. Okay, so I think the only thing I could really do to this thing is Zen Headbutt and Meteor Mash. If we can stop missing the Meteor Mash. There we are. So I should be heading in the right direction, right? Mm -hmm. I have no idea, to be completely honest. I'm basically lost. But not really. I'm pretty sure I can find my way home. If I tried hard enough. 
Okay, so it seems drift limbs spawn more frequently at night. It's probably why I had trouble finding them in the first place. Um, what is that over there? I think I'll tell you where I've been. In fact, I'm almost certain it's nowhere I've been. Well, I'll keep that on the horizon. While I continue to search this massive plane for new stuff that I care about catching. In other words, not giraffe rig. Persians. Eh, you're probably good experience. Children. That Snorlax for some reason only gave me one level. But I'm pretty sure that's because they completely revamped, uh... Well, actually, I'm pretty sure they revamped the whole swap out experience thing. So that you can't tank as much experience as you used to be able to. I think I'd rather have Leer than Withdraw. Defensive tank or not, I'd rather be able to Leer. If there's one thing I need to really start paying attention to now, it's PP, because I'm not too bad off right now. I'm still over half on most stuff. Or at half. Hey, look, Poke Loot. Okay, so it seems there's achievements for this shit now. Which I did find one of those last session, but I guess the achievement wasn't there. Not sure I want to be down there. Oh, it's war, never mind. It's just not loaded in. Kind of weird. That's right. See, everything I need to pay attention to is poke loot. And the other thing I need to pay attention to is I should probably actually go craft some balls. Because I think when I switch the mod packs around, it may have reset all my achievements. Let me just check right now. No, it didn't. The self crypto price. Good. Oh no, these these actually just carried over. And looks what these carried over from my error world, which is weird. Yeah, because I definitely did not build a, an item finder in this world, so these just carried over. And I'm pretty sure I just spawned myself in a Pokedex in this world, which is whatever. Pretty sure it was part of my starter kit, wasn't it? I decided to start the series, I just gave myself a Pokedex and a bunch of Pokeballs. That's mostly because I can't remember what the Pokedex cracking recipe is off the top of my head and didn't feel like looking it up at the time. I'm pretty sure it involves red dye. And probably a stupid amount of aluminum. Which I have a stupid amount of aluminum, but whatever. If there's more aluminum that, that you're going to find, probably one cave trip than what you could possibly ever need in the mod. While I'm here, I should probably actually be looking for... Not just poke loot chests, but specific hidden items. As a matter of fact, I should probably actually check out that forest to make sure there is no item trees. Now, I think there is actually an achievement for finding a master ball in a poke loot chest. Which sounds interesting. So, why don't we do that? I believe there's also an achievement for finding a secret grotto. Which I have no idea what those would even look like. First things first, let's just analyze all our trees around this, make sure none of them are wider than one block in the trunk, for the most part. Seems fairly simple to do. For all I know, I could miss one back there, but probably not. Now we have a Zerua. Seems they spawn planes as well. The more you know. Hmm. I'm pretty sure there's secret grows in here. I'm not sure those tree things count as them. Because I know for a fact I found one already. <clears throat> like I said, I think the achievements might reset or something. Hmm. Whatever. Got to go back there. Okay, so that swamp I'm 90% sure is the way home. Which means that everything over here is not the way home. Which is good, because I actually kind of want to uh, explore a little bit. Uh, might be the apples from the store that's a killer over here. I don't know. Okay, so we know there's nothing in that forest. Don't really see any poke loot on the horizon, per se. Don't really see any sparklies, either. 
So I should probably keep an eye out for those. If you see something, sh if anyone sees like a shiny particle effect, let me know. Because shiny particle effects lead to basically hidden items. So it's very much like the games at this point. I actually did find one. I can't remember if it was on camera or not, to be completely honest. I think it was actually off screen. Whatever. But yeah, in that mountain biome. Um, I can't remember if it was on camera or not, but I did definitely find a uh, shiny item like, on the side of the mountain. Just look for a white particle. And I'm pretty sure you have to be fairly close to it for it to trigger. But, you know. Just keep your eyes peeled for it. Because if you see it, that's good. Well, that really matters. Also, I'm not seeing any really high-level Pokemon in this planes biome, which is really, really weird to me. Also, it's at the point now where I might not want to be in this planes biome anymore, because if a legendary does spawn, it's going to be fucking Rayquaza. I am in no way, shape, or form ready to fight. Or deal with another Rayquaza incident. Unless, of course, I find the Master Ball. That's a pretty big on less, but... Unless, unless. Hmm. Oh, there's a Pikachu. Level 36. No, I think I'm going to go for this Giraffe Rig. This should get me at least a few levels. I want to do Magross. Ah. Giraffe Rig, I'm pretty sure it's psychic. And normal. Right? I'm going to go with Dragonair. It's probably going to be... A... I took the risk and it immediately blew up in my face. I am so great at this game. At this point, I think my only bet is Meteor Mash. So the main thing I was worried about with Giraffe was Crunch. Because I'm not resistant to it. But even so, Magross has probably more than enough defense to take it. Even so, I'm always a little bit skeptical about it. Oh, by the way, just fair warning, but if I do see a freaking boss Fero that is higher than blue tier, I am probably just going to go straight into Graham Road and chase it down, because I'm not letting that opportunity slip by. Let's be just completely honest here. Also, I'm probably going a fair bit away from anywhere near home. Maybe. Uh, he might challenge me. No, he won't. Plusles. I honestly don't understand the point of Plusle and Manoon. I really don't. Especially considering in Gen 4 they have, like, the two versions of Gastrodon. Which is basically the whole Plusle and Manoon thing, except it's one Pokemon instead of two. The way it should be. It's almost as if they said, okay, we kind of fucked up in Gen 3 with that. Kind of dropped the ball there. But don't worry, it'll never happen again. However, we're not going to go back and fix our mistake. Instead, it's going to stand out even more as an obvious mistake on our record. Okay. Well, I'm seeing like literally nothing at this point, so... I think I'm going to do... I'm just going to... Go out to Maricross. I kind of need a heal anyway, actually, wait. That's a level 3 like a tongue. One more battle before we hit the road. One more battle. Hammer Arm should be able to take care of it. Just please don't die, Magros. I need you to fly back. Matter of fact, I probably shouldn't even be taking this risk. Um, you should be fine, though. I am definitely going to need a free hand, though. So, here we go. Here we go. Okay, you're facing this way. So weird direction for you to be facing. I am going the opposite way of where I need to be. So it looks like that entire plane thing is just another giant island. Because I think I've been around that thing like 50 times now. And stupid dogs barking in the background, as usual. Wouldn't be a recording session without some kind of background noise. I'm not even sure if it's picking up on the microphone. 
see, I'm never quite sure if stuff picks up the microphone, to be completely honest. Because sometimes it looks like it does, and then when I listen back to it, it doesn't seem like it really does. Or if it does, it's so quiet you can barely hear it. But then again, I think my voice does come, come through a little bit quietly on this microphone. Actually, what am I doing? I want to heal. And the tree man rush. So far, so good. Our excellent adventure is going excellent so far, if you will. Oh, I'll stay with my a legendary spine here. Because the only thing, there's only two things it could be in the forest biome. Basically, there's only two things it could be in any biome that spawns legendary birds. Because Rayquaza can spawn in any biome that has mountains in it. And legendary birds only spawn in three specific biomes. Great, that's before the legendary bird quests. Which, considering leg legendary bird quests now, that means chances are we're probably not going to be seeing, you know, legendary bird spawn. Which means that we're basically guaranteed a Rayquaza spawn. Just, is there a boss out there? I can't tell, but I want to. Can I ride Dragonair in the water? I don't know. Are you mountable? Are you mountable? No, you're not. I wish I could swim with you. Let's rotate. So I can't tell if that thing was a boss or not. In any case, I'm not going to go after it. Because if it was a boss, it's green tier. Great, yeah, green tier can drop the elusive mass flare ball that I am definitely looking for. I'm not sure I want to take that risk. And here's the uh, desert that I knew existed. Yeah. Apparently it crept on lava and lag. Should probably not be taking so many risks. Okay, so because we're here and I might see something I want to catch immediately. Gotta keep my Pokeballs out. Gotta keep your balls out. Go balls out. And loot. Fortunately, that was nothing good, but I should be able to definitely find any loot that is around here a lot better with this setup. Um, okay, this, this thing's a huge risk to fight. Mostly because I'm going to lose a turn here, and Earth moves are going to be super effective against Metagross. And you can also have Dragon moves, which would kill Dragonair. This is a huge risk. However, it looks like one of his moves is a faint attack, which... Means so far so good. Which I go with. I can't Thunder Wave him because he's ground. I can Aqua Tail. Or I can Dragon Rush. Dragon Rush does more damage, less accuracy, but. And thank Christ Flygon has no defense at all. That's why I'm not probably going to be using Flygon. At least not since I figured out Magross can fly. Not because I don't like Flygon, it's just because a like, Flygon dies too quickly to anything. Like Flygon is a glass jaw. If ever there was a glass jaw in the world of Pixelmon, Flygon is it. He can't take a hit. Like Grand, I know that was a Dragon Rush, a hundred damage move. But even so, it was coming from a Pokemon that's basically the same level. Probably shouldn't. Probably would not have one hit anything with decent defense. So yeah, Flygon super glass draw. Real, real, real. It's kind of unfortunate, but it's the reality of the situation. So all right, I already found one thing of Pokeloot. There's also a lot of seemingly open land here, and there's all those flying out spawning. Yeah, I'm probably going to toggle that back down. Because just look at this. Look at this. Like, what is this? Uh, that's ridiculous is what it is. There's no reason for that many things to be spawning. Ever. These guys are a little bit cluttered. This is probably a really bad move. Ah, never mind. He's done. Granted, if I had missed, that probably was still a really bad move. 
Um, I keep super silent. I don't know if I learned Confuse right. Probably not, so get rid of it. I don't like Super Sonic. It's not 100% accurate. I like Confuse Ray. So I'm gonna have a move that can screw people over, I'd rather Confuse Ray, but even then, Confusion's a 50 50 chance. So you're kind of gambling our way. Whatever way we'll gamble with here is the Diglett Campbell. If I can fucking hit. No, I'm getting new one, aren't I? You know what? Clamp will still probably kill it. Double super effective. Shoulder, shoulder. Okay, seriously, sugar canes. I know you have sugary goodness in you, that's no reason to be blocking me. Icicle Spear Clamp. I'm gonna go with Icicle Spear. There we are. So Icicle Spear worked out for me. Apparently this is a beach because, uh, shelter. Or not a beach, but an ocean biome. And you really, really want to fight it, don't you? Well, you're a rock type, so Meteor Mash. Yeah, that was a poor move on your part. Steel type is a really weird type. It's not the greatest offensively. It's one of the best defensively. Outside of its three glaring weaknesses. Like, adding the steel type to almost every type makes almost every type better. To be completely honest, it really does. It's just such a great, like, all-around defensive type for the most part. Like, steel and fighting. It basically eliminates all fighting type weaknesses and replaces them with steel type weaknesses. So it's not actually really that bad of a trade-off. Because, I mean, fighting type weaknesses include psychic, flying... I think those are really the main two. Probably another one that I'm forgetting about. But Psychic and Flying remain too against fighting types. And you basically replace those with the Steel type weaknesses. But you gain so many more resistances it almost doesn't matter. Alright, so. Got another forest here. Gotta go check it out real quick. See what there is to see. Maybe Poke Loot. Maybe some Hollow Ash Trees. That would be nice. Some Growlithe. I think I also caught a Joltik off screen. I can't remember if it was in this world or not. I know for a fact I caught one in the air world. Not sure about this world though. Alright. So, seemingly a lot of nothing so far. Let me know if anyone sees a giant tree. Like, that's something I would actually like to know. Because I kind of need to find those. And I'm so happy I'm playing in Peaceful right now. Because it's Pokemon. You should be able to sprint wherever the hell you want, whenever the hell you want. Not only that, but you shouldn't have to worry about hunger. In what Pokemon game do you ever have to feed yourself? You don't. Matter of fact, Pokemon and Pokemon games are more human than humans are. Because at least Pokemon eat. <laughs> kind of. An Aether. That's not actually that great. I almost never use battle items because, like, to be completely honest in this mod, most things are either going to hit you or not to hit you. Like, either you're going to be getting too hit by something or not. And there's no ifs, ends, or buts. There's not much point to strategy when pretty much anything that's strong will usually always use one or two hit kill moves. There's a balance in this mod is just a little bit off. Like, not amazingly off, but it's off just enough to, to the point where it, you know, things that are stronger than you are basically guaranteed to be able to, like, two-shot you. Minimum. Two or three shot you. Because it's a strange level thing. It seems to have more or less more of a Borderlands progression in terms of level difficulty. Where in Borderlands, if something's like a level higher than you, it's basically doing like 1.5 times damage to you. Regular Pokemon games, that's usually not so much the case. Like, they'll do more damage than you, but first off, it depends on type. Second off, it's usually not that bad. 
Like it's usually like 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. It's not significant, is the point. When you get to like around 1.5, that becomes significant. That, that's where it becomes noticeably more damage. Grand, grand 1.5 isn't too much to get up in arms about. But then you get some Pokemon that are like the same level as you and they like do like almost twice your damage. It's just ridiculous. Grand, I think most of that just has to do with uh, picking parties and stuff. Sp specifically picking balanced parties that are balanced defensively as well as offensively, which is super hard to do in this mod, to say the least. Especially considering early game, it's way better to have high attack. Because otherwise you're not going to be able to level up or shit. Which I guess is true in Pokemon as well, but... Then you, later on you can usually build more for defense, but... EVs in this system are really, really weird. And so it's basically like you're playing straight vanilla anyway. Like Pokemon before people finally all about all the EV shit. Which... I didn't even know about EVs till literally before I started playing Gen 4, which wasn't that long ago. Like, I didn't start, I didn't play Gen 4 at all till like literally, I want to say like October of last year. Because I went like seven years without touching a Pokemon game. So I skipped like all the DS ones. And then I played Gen 4. And kind of got halfway through it, and then I just kind of decided, you know what? I'm just going to skip Gen 5 and go straight to Gen 6. Even though, uh, from everything I've heard, Gen 5 is the one that you probably should skip the least. If there was a generation to skip, it was probably Gen 4. From everything I hear. And that's mostly because Gen 4 is, from what I've heard, more or less kind of underwhelming. Like, it did a lot of good things. But... It didn't really introduce a lot of new Pokemon at all. Granted, from from what I did play of it, and I played a fair bit of it, it seems that Gen 4, to my knowledge, probably has the second best, if not best, Elite 4 of all time. Like, it's pretty high up there, their Elite 4. Like, I think the Kalos region's Elite 4 is pretty good, too. Like, anything is better than Gen 3 Elite 4, which is the last Elite 4 I dealt with. Like, Ruby and Sapphire's Elite Four was the most garbage Elite Four I've ever set eyes upon. Like, absolute goddamn trash. Like, literally the worst. Like, you don't understand how bad that Elite Four is. Like, not, not because, like, they're weak or anything, just because it's the laziest Elite Four of all time. Like, literally, like... Every freaking trainer has, like, just duplicates of the same Pokemon. Pretty much. They'll have, like, two or three Pokemon that are unique, and then the rest is just duplicates. It's dumb. Like, the Ice type is one of the worst offenders. Like, fucking, like, two or two Glolly, two Celio, and a Walrein. Like, that is dumb. Like, that's literally, oh, we want to use nothing but, like, Gen 3 Pokemon for the Elite Four, except we don't have that many for ice types or dragon types so let's just loop a bunch of the same shit that was literally their game plan and it was super lazy but there's nothing to get someone more on hype than the gen 3 elite 4 if anyone doesn't know what i'm talking about go play free gen 3 like if you haven't played gen 3 uh, or any of the newer gens for whatever reason like, if you're a Gen 1 or Gen 2 person who never played anything past that, play Gen 3 and just look at the disappointment. Like, you probably wouldn't even understand the disappointment unless you played Gen 2. For starters, if you played Gen 1 and haven't played Gen 2, what did you do with your life? Seriously? Like, Gen 2 was, for the longest time, considered to be probably the pinnacle. Like, it was the closest we are ever going to get to what Pokemon should have always been. Which is basically expand on the existing areas while introducing new areas. Which, due to uh, limitations of cartridges at the time, they weren't able to really fulfill that. But they did damn their damnness to try, at the very least. Which I really do appreciate. Alright, so let's get this uh, sand slash going. This is probably going to be a really, really, really sketchy fight here. 
Okay, so. Awkward Tales of Physical Attacks. Does not seem to be doing too much. It's only 90% accurate. If he uses a sand attack, I'm not going to be able to hit this thing. Hell, even if he doesn't use a sand attack, I'm probably not going to be able to hit this thing. Except this thing is dumb and just do sandstorm like five times. So it deserved whatever fate it got. Let's put it that way. Deserve the faith I, I bestowed upon it with my pawnage. Pwnage, if you will. I think that's actually the correct way of saying that. I don't know why I said pawnage. This isn't fucking chess. As you can tell, I've been talking randomly for a while. I think most of the reason for that, I have not recorded anything in well over a week. And I do actually have more Minecraft stuff to upload, like another session of my modded exploration, whatever. I really wanted to call it modded survival. I really did. In case you couldn't tell from the episode titles. Where I keep calling trying to call it modded survival at the start, but it's not. And like I said, the main reason it's not modded survival. Mostly because Captain Sparkles and his own modded survival series, which I honestly think might be part of the reason why I wanted to call it modded survival, because it just sounds so damn good. But you know what? He's already done that. I'm not gonna call it modded survival. I'm going to keep saying Mod Survival, but that's not the official title of the series. The official title is wherever the hell I wrote, so that's not Mod Survival. Like, the whole thing with Let's Play names, I find this silly. There's only so many things you can call a Minecraft series that deals with mods. So I'm just going to call it the most generic thing ever. Random Minecraft Mod Exploration with blank. Super generic Mod Exploration blankety blank blank blank. 